Hi, my name's Alan Sanders, and I am not a professional mechanic. As a matter of fact, the only thing I knew about cars until recently was how to turn the engine on and how to put gas in the tank. So why am I telling you this? It's simple, to prove that anyone can service their vehicle's air conditioning system using this kit from Interdynamics. As the package indicates, the R134A retrofit and charging kit can be used in one of two ways. To convert an older vehicle with an R12 system, like my 91 truck, or to replace lost refrigerant in a vehicle that already uses R134A. The conversion process is really easy, involving only four steps. So, let's get started. Locating the service port, installing service port adapters, charging the system, and filling out the retrofit label. You know, when the air conditioner in my blazer started blowing warm air, I went to a couple garages for some estimates. I'll tell you, I quickly found out that cold air doesn't come cheap. Fortunately, I went to my local parts store and discovered the do-it-yourself air conditioning products from Interdynamics. Okay, now before we start installing the product, let's take a brief look at the air conditioning system and the two different types of systems used by vehicle manufacturers. That's going to give us a good idea of where the high and low sides of the systems are in our vehicles. There are three major components used in the air conditioning system, including the compressor, which is bolted to the engine, the condenser, located behind the grill, and the evaporator, which is typically mounted behind the firewall. Some systems use a receiver dryer and expansion valve, while others are equipped with an accumulator and orifice tube. Regardless of the design, the air conditioning system is divided into high and low pressure sides. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of the system, let's check the contents of the kit. In addition to the installation CD, the Interdynamics model RKR8 kit comes with three 12-ounce charging cans. Each charging can contains 10 ounces of R134A refrigerant, two ounces of ester oil, plus high mileage anti-wear additives, o-ring conditioners, and leak sealer. Since lost refrigerant is typically caused by slight o-ring leaks, the additive package included with the Interdynamics refrigerant lets you seal minor leaks as you're charging. Other items in the kit include the trigger dispenser with built-in gauge and rangefinder. The gauge allows you to monitor system pressure while compensating for ambient or outside temperatures, giving you an accurate pressure reading while checking the pressure and an accurate fill level when charging. The kit also contains two service port adapters and sealing caps for all 1976 and newer domestic cars. The kit also comes with a retrofit label, which will inform future owners and or service technicians that the AC system has been converted to R134A. Remember, this kit can be used two ways depending on the type of refrigerant your vehicle currently uses. The easiest way to determine this is to compare the low side service port on your vehicle with the low side adapter in the kit. In an orifice tube system like the one in my truck, the low side service port is located on the accumulator. As you can see, the adapter does not match the port since the system currently uses R12. Notice on a vehicle that uses R134A, however, that the adapter and service port are identical. Now, since my truck uses R12, I'll be converting the system to R134A. For those of you who'll be using the kit to recharge an existing R134A system, stay tuned because I'll be covering those steps as we go. Before converting an R12 system, you'll need to have the remaining refrigerant recovered by a certified technician. And although this requires specialized equipment, a lot of shops will perform the service for free. After all, R12 is really expensive and any refrigerant they recover is like money in their pocket. With the R12 removed from the system, the first step is to locate your service ports. In an orifice tube system, the high side port is typically located on the line coming out of the condenser, while the low side port is mounted on the accumulator. With an expansion valve system, the low side service port is usually mounted on the line between the evaporator and the compressor 
while the high side port is generally found between the condenser and the receiver dryer. Keep in mind that if you're using the kit to charge an existing R134A system, you only need to locate the low side service port on your vehicle. Never attempt to charge the system through the high side. To familiarize you with service port locations, take a look at the expansion valve and orifice tube systems on the following vehicles. This vehicle uses an expansion valve system. Note the locations of the air conditioning components. On this particular system, the service ports are mounted side by side, the low side port on the suction line and the high side port on the liquid line. The AC system in this luxury car uses an orifice tube design. Note the location of the components used in this system. The low side service port is located on the accumulator, while the high side port is mounted on the liquid line between the compressor and condenser. Once you've found the service ports on your vehicle, remove the sealing caps and then wipe the port threads with a clean rag. Next, identify the adhesive coated adapters in the kit. The adhesive coating is red and can be seen by looking into the port side of the adapter. The low side adapter can be identified as the only one that fits into the end of the charging hose. Now install the adapter on the low side service port and snug it with a wrench. The short adapter is used for the high side port. Install this adapter as you did the previous one. When retrofitting the AC system in a 1975 or older model or certain late model imports, a special high side adapter, part number VA7H, will be required. The next step is to attach one of the charging cans to the trigger dispenser. While holding the trigger dispenser with one hand, Use your other hand to screw the can into the brass fitting located inside the base of the dispenser handle. Make sure the can is tightly secured to prevent leaks. Since R134A operates at a slightly higher pressure than R12, you only need to fill the system to 85% of its original capacity when performing a conversion. Remember, when charging a system, more is not better. To determine the fill requirements, locate the refrigerant label in the engine compartment. On my truck, the label is attached to the evaporator case. Since the system in my truck calls for 2 pounds or 32 ounces of R12, I'll multiply 32 by .85. This works out to an equivalent R134A fill of a little more than 27 ounces, which means that I'll be using two full cans and most of the third. If you can't find a refrigerant label in the engine compartment, check the owner's manual. With the charging can ready, start the engine, and then turn the air conditioning to maximum cool and set the fan switch to the highest speed. Now let the engine run for about three minutes. Be aware, carbon monoxide poisoning can be fatal. Never operate the engine with the vehicle inside a closed garage. Next. Pull back the coupler sleeve on the end of the charging hose and place the coupler over the low side port. Now, release the sleeve to lock the coupler in position. Since we're converting this system to R134A and the R12 has been recovered, there is no pressure in the system. Consequently, the gauge will read zero when the hose is connected. However, if you're charging an existing R134A system, the gauge will display the system's current pressure. We'll look at using the gauge to determine system fill in just a moment, but for now, let's begin the charging process, which, by the way, is the same whether you're retrofitting or just topping off. While holding the can in the upright position and shaking it vigorously, squeeze the trigger to release the contents into the air conditioning system. Repeat the procedure for the second can. Since I won't need the entire contents of the third can, I'll judge the fill based on the pressure gauge reading. The pressure gauge is color-coded to make interpreting the reading easy. Notice the temperature markings below the color-coded band. These are the ambient or outside temperatures. Also note the gauge lens rotates and includes a V with an arrow. Turn the gauge lens so the arrow in the middle of the V points to the ambient or outside temperature. If the system pressure is below the range outlined by the V on the lens, charge the system. If the pressure is above the range of the V, do not charge. 
Note that the compressor must be engaged or cycling while checking the pressure. The pulley or clutch assembly located on the front of the compressor should be spinning. If the compressor is not engaged, your pressure reading will not be accurate. The color-coded gauge indicates that you are low on refrigerant if you are generally in the white area. The green area generally indicates a proper refrigerant level, while the red area usually indicates there could be more extensive problems and you should stop charging. If you don't need the entire contents of a can, as determined by the pressure gauge, release the trigger to stop the flow of refrigerant, and then disconnect the coupler from the low side service port. At this point, install the sealing caps on the service ports. The can should be stored in a cool, dry place with the trigger dispenser attached. The last step in the process is to fill out the retrofit label and then place it over the original label to ensure the system is properly identified for future service. Well, that's all there is to it. Now that you've got a cool ride, go help a friend chill out with Inner Dynamics.